see here that you would draw the lost to yourself through the ministry. I, I just I got this picture in my head on Sunday evenings, just the sanctuary in the gym, just jam packed full with young adults who just love God. Like I mean, we want to see the place grow, but not just for numbers' sake. To really see, you know, non Christians come to faith in Jesus Christ and love God. Like I have this picture in my head on Sunday evenings of just the worship team playing. And the church is packed, but the young adults are not just sitting watching. They're they're engaged in the worship. They're on their knees. They're lifting their hands up to heaven. Man, that kind of excitement. Anyway, um, kind of been and, um, because, you know, kind of been asking Lord, just kind of give me some clarity on what you're doing here. And so uh, this morning I was in First Second Corinthians chapter four and five, and there are a number of verses in here that really hit me. I think Paul here is talking about um, just his motive for preaching the gospel and how. It's not being done with any pretense. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, <clears throat> verse 2, uh, he says, Rather, we have renounced a secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is being veiled, it's being veiled to those who are perishing and um, that verse particularly stands out to me because, you know, one of the things I know I've been wrestling with through this whole process is that, you know, do I need to change my preaching style? Do I need to be more seeker-oriented? Uh, my sermons tend to be very geared to speak to believers, to help them grow, which really is our vision. Our vision is to uh, uh, invest in the lives of young adults, college students, and 20-somethings, so that they in turn influence people in their lives of Christ. We want to raise up passionate believers who love God and reach other people who become passionate believers who love God. And so, um, you know, I've kind of been wrestling. Like, do I need to change my style? Do I need to plan message series that are more oriented towards non-believers? And personally, I've been feeling, no, just keep preaching the word of God. And I feel like Paul is talking about that here in verse 2 when he says, no, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience, and, and that and that if the truth is be, is being veiled, it's being veiled to those who are who, whom God's you know those whom God. The Bible says that um, no man can come to the Father unless the Father draws him near, and so you know there's this sense like if they're rejecting the truth and they're rejecting God, so that's not that's not for me to worry. My, my goal, all I have to say, my goal is or my calling is to preach the Word of God, set forth the Word of God plainly. Um, unashamedly preach the truth. So anyway, I just, I felt encouraged by that to keep, um, just keep preaching as I am, keep preaching the word of God. My next series I'm thinking about is going to be through the seven letters to the church in Revelation. And it's going to be a hard hitting message because it's very, even for me, just studying it, it's kind of been convicting, you know, and it'd be very easy to look at um, a series like that and say, oh, that's not going to reach non-believers, but hey, it's the word of God. So I'm going to preach it anyway. So that's kind of the first part. And then later on in verse seven, Paul goes on to say, he, he says, verse 7, chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians, he says, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. And I feel like that kind of builds on the whole idea of preaching the word of God plainly. And, and it's the whole idea that he talks about these great treasure we have in jars of clay. So there's this powerful thing in this weak thing. And, and I think that that's kind of the power in preaching the truth plainly. It's not my ability to weave a good argument that convinces the lost. Really, it's me pre presenting, or it's us presenting the Word of God and the power of God working in spite of me. You know, it's this, it's this all-surpassing power that's, I'm the, tra I'm the jar of clay. I'm the weak one. The gospel and the spirit of God is this great treasure within me. So I find... Great encouragement in knowing that as I preach the word of God, God works powerfully in me, through me, as a jar of clay, in spite of my weaknesses. And then, um, you know, later on at the end of chapter 4, uh, he talks about, um, for our light, I'm sorry, uh, verse 18, he talks about, so we fix our eyes on not, eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen, for what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Then later on in chapter 5, verse 7, he talks about how um, that we live by faith and not by sight. And then he fleshes out the gospel of how we've been called to a ministry of reconciliation. And, you know, once again, I just like, I, man, that's everything I'm reading this morning, this chapter is what God's been speaking to me. And, and this particular part has to, I feel God's been saying, walk by faith, not by sight. You know, that, that though you don't see what you've been praying and seeking me for, you keep on doing what I've called you to do. Keep preaching the word. Keep seeking me in prayer. Keep equipping those leaders. 
um, and I will show up. And, and when I show up, I will I will fight for my calls. I, I think about um, in my um, John MacArthur study Bible years ago. I got this years ago when I was in college. And I wrote down a quote from Charles Spurgeon in my Bible. Actually, I printed it out and taped it to my Bible. And um, here's what it says. I, I love this. And I always come back to this. It says, pray without ceasing and preach the faithful word in clearer terms than ever. Such a course of conduct may seem to some to be a sort of standing still and doing nothing. But in very truth, it is bringing God into the battle. And when he comes to avenge the quarrel of his covenant, he will make short work of it. So arise, O Lord, and plead thy own cause. It's Charles Spurgeon. And I just love that because I feel like, you know, this whole idea of just you, you preach the word, you pray like a juggernaut, as uh, Stephen Furtick from Elevation Church would say, um, and man, when God shows up, he's going to do it in a moment. It's going to be like, you know, while you're still looking, you're wondering, all of a sudden God shows up. And, and so, I don't know, I'm preaching to myself now, I guess. But, um, you know, I just want to keep pressing forth to walk by faith and not by sight. Keep preaching the word, present the truth of God plainly. Recognize that it is the power of God working through the gospel and, and trust that he will do it. And, and when he does it, we're going to celebrate that. So, that's our word for today. God bless.